Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to check out my wife's business, Ashira Clips, where she sells some fantastic hair clips, hair pins, and other great hair accessories that uh, can fit the needs and styles of any woman, as well as offering different sizes to fit different types of hair. You can uh, check out her business page over at lilarose.biz, L-I-L-L-A rose.biz slash Ashira, A-S-H-I-R-A. And you can check out her uh, Facebook page over at ashira.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And the title of this one is Murder Bound. Mystery is my hobby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barton Drake speaking. For this evening's drama, I select a case history number 67 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it Murder Bound. It was the middle of last winter, and in a remote hunting lodge in northern New Hampshire, a brother and sister and their two guests were preparing to sit out a blizzard, which threatened to be one of the worst in years. Hello, Jim. Can you hear me? I wouldn't try to get through if I were you. Well, I'm calling from the cabin, and it started snowing about six this morning. No, we'll be all right. Look, we'll expect you in a couple of days. Right. So long. <laughs> they're not going to try and make it, eh, Cal? Uh, no. No, they're driving that old station wagon, and uh, getting through would be too uncertain. Uh, I think this is too exciting. Really, I do. Four of us maroon, snowbound, far from civilization, cut off from the world. Oh, it's too, too thrilling, really. All I can say is I hope we're not caught here more than a couple of days. Oh, Don, you're so unromantic, really. Well, being a psychiatrist... Don means that we might begin to wear on each other's nerves because of the uh, forced intimacy. <laughs> uh, Don's an alarmist. Why, we've known each other for years. This is going to be fun. Bruce is right. You know, being cut off like this gives one a sense of adventure. So let's enjoy ourselves, huh? All right. Look, uh, how about a couple of hands of bridge? Oh, let's set up the table in front of the fire. Hmm? Hey, speaking of the fire, I'd better get some more wood. Hey, let me go, Cal. It's only a step and I need the exercise. <laughs> All right, Superman. If you insist. Oh, I think this is going to be grand fun, really. Huh? Pull up your chairs, everybody, and after a little bit, I'll make some coffee. Yeah, put the coffee on now. I'll need a cup when I get back. Oh, good morning, Peg. Oh, it's chilly in here. Calvin, is it still snowing out? Of course it's still snowing out. That's a silly question. Oh, well, really, Calvin, you don't have to be rude. I merely ask. And you don't have to be so dumb. If you want to know if it's still snowing, look out the window. Really, Calvin, just because you're my brother... Oh, for no... heaven's sake, Peggy, stop saying really. But, Calvin, really... Good morning, Peggy. I've been looking for you. How about a game of casino? Huh? Oh, really, Bruce? Casino board. It does, really. How about getting an armful of wood for the fire, Bruce? It's pretty low. <laughs> How about getting it yourself, old boy? I got it the last three times. Well, 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 here we are. Just one big happy family. How's for a spot of coffee, Peg? Can't do a thing without coffee in the morning. Really, Don, am I a servant? Aren't you capable of making your own coffee? <laughs> oh, that's telling him, Peg. Who was your servant last year, Don? Bruce, do you have to prefix your cliches with that silly laugh? Well, that's no worse than Peg's, really. Really, Calvin? Must you be so obnoxious? <laughs> uh, Carl, Cal is obnoxious, isn't he? Quit <laughs> that laughing. Shut up, Don. I'll do my own fighting. 
Really, Cal, just because we're snowbound... Four days of snow so thick you can't see ten feet. (laughs) It's bound to stop sometime. It always has. Can't you say anything without laughing, Bruce? Really, must we quarrel? The others will be here soon. Peg's right. Let's quit this getting on each other's nerves. (laughs) Sure, let's. That's okay with me. Really, that's the most sensible thing. Must you make love to me? It's so boring. <laughs> Why not? There's nothing else to do. Well, really. If I hear that guy laugh again, I'll kill him. Hey, be careful, Bruce. That gun's loaded. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm not going to kill anyone. Six days of snow. It's getting us. I knew it would. <laughs> Who was that? Where did those shots come from? Hello? Who's there? Guess I'm getting jumpy. Calvin, Calvin, I heard some shots. Well, where's Bruce and Don? Oh, really? This is dreadful. Well, they must be outside. Come on, let's no, see. No, here comes someone now. Well, who is it? I can't tell. It's snowing too hard. Oh, he's coming in. Oh, really? I can't understand. Oh, my God. Don? What happened? Where's Bruce? Dead. He oh. shot himself. Either that or someone murdered him. Holy smoke, Bart. Where are we now? I can't see anything but snow, Inspector. Here, let me wipe off the windshield. Wiping off the windshield won't do any good. The only thing that'll help us now is about three days of good California weather. <laughs> yes. That would certainly solve our problem, wouldn't it, Inspector? Yeah, maybe this is funny to you, but to me, freezing to death is a heck of a way to die. We've all got to go sometime, Inspector. Yeah. Inspector, we're stuck. Now, what do you think of that? I told you that we shouldn't have tried to come through tonight. Oh, sure, you told me. You knew the storm wasn't going to let up. You know everything. Inspector, do I detect a note of sarcasm in your flattery? <laughs> Come on. Where are you going? I'm going to try and find a habitation, Inspector. We haven't passed a house since early this afternoon. Which means there must be one nearby. The law of averages, you know, Inspector. Well, by golly, I'm not getting out of this car. I don't want to freeze to death. The trick is to keep moving, Inspector. Yeah, I'm going to sit right here. Okay, Inspector. I'll have them pick up your corpse early in the morning. Hey, boss. Yes, Inspector. Wait a minute, dog. Got it. I'm coming. <laughs> I thought you'd think better of sitting there alone, Inspector. How are we going to find our way through this storm? It's pitch dark, and it's snowing so doggone hard. I think if we keep that light in our line of vision, we'll be all right, Inspector. What are you talking about? That light over there, Inspector. The one that's winking at us through the tree. Well, I'll be... Bart. Yes, Inspector? You saw that light all the time, didn't you? You were kidding me. Kidding you? Yeah. I, Inspector? Oh, <laughs> come on, let's go. <laughs> Almost there, Inspector. Yeah, Are you tired? No, what gave you that idea? Oh, it's just a passing fancy. Uh, hey, look there, Inspector. There seems to be some sportsman's hunting ride. So what if it is? Let's get inside. All right, Inspector. If you're rested enough... Oh. Phew. Good to get out of that wind. It'd be even better to get inside where it's warm. Yeah. Sheriff Metcalf. Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Well, I had no idea you'd even try to get through in this storm. Lucky for us you did, though. Uh, who's this young man with you, Sheriff? Oh, just a minute, Mr. Uh, oh, excuse uh, me. You don't know who I am, of course. I'm Smith. Calvin Smith. Uh, it was I who called you on the phone and explained about the suicide. Suicide? Yes. A chap by the name of Bruce Stern. Didn't Sheriff Metcalf here explain it to you? No, no, he didn't. You see, uh, Sheriff Metcalf has a way of keeping those things to himself until he makes sure of the facts. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose that's smart. Uh, however, now, just we... a minute. There's some explaining to be done around here. Well, I don't know what else I can tell you, Sheriff. Bruce was depressed, financially as well as mentally, I mean. And then on top of that, Peggy refused to marry him. So he went down to the pond and shot himself. You see, it's very simple. Yeah, I see it is. Only... Oh, are these men, Cal? Certainly not the sheriff. You're not the sheriff, are you? No, no, I'm not. Oh, I hate attractive men who are sheriffs. Well, well Calvin 
Cynthia, do introduce me. Really, you're being most rude. Gentlemen, this is my sister Peggy. How do you do, Miss Smith? As you can see, she enjoys the sound of her own voice. Oh, Calvin, really? Oh, be still, Peggy. Oh. This is Sheriff Ira Metcalf. Now, look, if and somebody this... doesn't let me say something... There, there, you see? The sheriff wants to talk, too. Oh, Calvin, sometimes you're so difficult. Uh, what's your name? Name? Uh, uh, why, uh, it's uh, John. John? Oh, how too, too divine. I've always wanted to know an attractive man named John. Uh, may I call you John? Please? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, how wonderful. And you must call me Peggy. Peggy, will you stop running off the mouth? These men are here for a purpose. Sheriff, I suppose you'll want to view the body. Okay, okay, I give up. I'm the sheriff. Where's the body? Oh, I think this is so exciting. Oh, I do hope that poor Bruce was murdered. Uh, well, I mean, since he's dead anyway, why not have him murdered? Because it's so dull around shut here. Shut up. Now, if you gentlemen will come with me. The corpse is in the woodshed. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Personally, I'm not able to think. That talking machine sister of yours left me kind of dizzy. Well, don't worry, Sheriff. Peggy won't bother you out here in the woodshed where it's cold. Good. Now, maybe I can explain who... Uh, uh, Sheriff. Huh? Who are you calling Sheriff? You, Sheriff. Now, Mr. Smith, if Bruce Stearns died down on the ice pond, why is his body here in the woodshed? Oh, I see what you mean. We shouldn't have moved the body. No. Under the circumstances, I think we were justified, however. You see, the ice pond is partly roofed over, but the snow is drifting in fast. Another day, and we might not have been able to locate the corpse. Now, look over here. So, the body is in a perfect state of preservation. Yes. As you know, the temperature in this locality hasn't risen above zero for the past week. Mm -hmm. And at this time of year, it isn't likely to for another month. Oh, hello, Don. Come in. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Donald Shumway, one of our guests. Don, this is Sheriff Metcalf, and John... Uh, what did you say your last name was? Sawyer, John Sawyer. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, how Hi. do you do? How do you do? Peggy told me the local law had arrived. <laughs> you chaps must be badly in need of a murder to come out here on a night like this. Who said it was murder? Oh, that's a sharp question, Sheriff. <laughs> and I always thought Rube Hawkshaws were comic strip characters. Well, are you going to answer the question? Sure, I'll answer it. I didn't say it was murder. As a matter of fact, my guess is that Bruce shot himself. Did you examine the body, Doctor? Yes, I examined it. He was shot twice through the head. I got to him five minutes after it happened. That's right, gentlemen. Don called me and asked me to help him carry Bruce up here to the woodshed out of the storm. So, did you hear the shots, Mr. Smith? Oh, no, naturally not. You see, the ice pond is some distance from the house, and, well, the storm is making a terrific roar. Did you hear the shots, Doc? Of course I didn't. No one heard them. Then how did you know that you arrived at the ice pond five minutes after it happened? Well, I'll be darned. Cal, who was it said these hick cops were dumb? Never mind that. Answer the question. I'll answer the question, Sheriff. You don't have to get tough. I happened to overhear the tail end of the quarrel between Bruce and Peggy. But, Don, you didn't tell me that. Oh, why should I? I heard Bruce threaten to kill himself. Why make an unpleasant situation worse by talking about it? Mm-hmm. So you followed Bruce Stearns down to the ice pond in the hopes of stopping him from carrying out his threat. Is that it, Doctor? Yes, that's it. Only I got there too late. By the time I arrived, Bruce had shot himself. I'm sorry, Doctor. Stearns didn't shoot himself. He was murdered. Oh, he was? Now, look, you rube cops might be pretty smart, but I happen to be a doctor, and I say... Doctor, you should be the first to realize that Bruce Stearns couldn't have committed suicide. What the devil are you talking about? Bruce Stearns was shot twice through the head... A man who shoots himself once through the head doesn't live long enough to shoot himself a second time. Sheriff, I suggest that we wait until daylight and then visit the scene of the crime. Perhaps we will uncover some more items of interest. You tired of shoveling, Inspector? Yeah, hey, let's stop and rest a minute. Uh, all right. Uh, well... <laughs> At least we're fortunate that the storm blew itself out, my night. Yeah. Say, when are we going to stop this play acting, tell that bunch who we really are? Inspector, do you object to being regarded as a rube sheriff? No, rube sheriffs are as good as anyone else only. That's just uh, the point, Inspector. We know they are, but Smith and his friends seem to think that any local law enforcement is rather stupid. Yeah. As long as they think that, we have the advantage. Don't you agree? Well, maybe you're right at that. Well, let's get on with the shoveling. Right you are. <sighs> think maybe we'll find a suicide note. Nope. Pin to the ice, eh? <laughs> I'm afraid we can't hope for that, Inspector. But what if Doc Shumway was kidding us? 
about the spot where he found Stern's body. Uh, uh, uh. Huh? Inspector, come here, look. Where? Just a minute till I clear away the last of the snow. Uh, there. Now, can you see it? Well, I'll be darned. The doc wasn't kidding after no, all. No, he wasn't, Inspector. There's the perfect outline of a man's body sunk in the ice. Yeah. What's the hair for? Listen... Dr. Shumway said that he followed Bruce Stearns down here and that he arrived five minutes after Stearns died. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Being a doctor, he'd know how long the guy had been dead. But, <laughs> Inspector, do you think a man's body lying here on the ice could have made an impression such as this in five minutes' time? Say, maybe you got something there, Bart. Perhaps, Inspector, perhaps. Now, let me see. No, I think that theory's all wrong. Well, make up your mind, will you? I'm getting cold. Yes, it's definitely wrong, Inspector. There's no doubt about it. Stearns committed suicide after all, eh? No, Inspector. Stearns was murdered, but not by being shot. I'll bet my last dollar he died from a blow on the head followed by freezing. <laughs> This is the woodshed. The house is up there. Yes, Inspector, I know. I want to have another look at the corpse. Oh, let's get it over with fast. This won't take a minute. Yes, there it is. There's what? The thermometer on the wall, Inspector. I noticed it last night. What does it say, Inspector? Let's see. Oh, I wish I hadn't looked. Yes, that is pretty cold, isn't it, Inspector? Uh, let's take another glance at the corpse. What are we going to look for this time? Well... Those bullet wounds really don't tell us very much, do they, Inspector? Only that the guy's dead. But not necessarily from the bullets. It's possible that both of them could have merely grazed the skull. If it were my skull, I'd give up and admit being dead. Look, that slight abrasion behind his left ear. That could have been made by a blow from a heavy instrument. Yes, I think that explains it. You think what explains what? It explains the manner in which Bruce Stearns died, Inspector. The motive for his having died and the identity of his... What's that? What's that? Someone close the shed door. Come on, Inspector, quick! Oh, we're being spied on, eh? Well, uh, it's locked. Yes, of course, it's locked, Inspector. It was locked by the murderer. I'm afraid he has us neatly trapped. What do you mean, trapped? Open that door, hey? Open up, I say. It's no use, Inspector. That door is made of oak logs. Don't waste your strength. Don't waste my strength. Well, what would you suggest? Are we going to just stand here and freeze to death? I think that's the fate that our captor has in mind for us, Inspector. What did you say the thermometer registered? Ten degrees below zero? Yeah, and us wearing light top coats. Jumping Judas, we got to do something. Maybe if we began to yell, someone would hear us, eh? <laughs> I'm afraid that isn't very likely. This shed is in the rear of the house, and the heavy logs would successfully deaden our voices. Besides, if the murderer is as smart as I think he is, he's going to convince the others that we've quit our job. No, Inspector. We've got to figure some way of getting out of here, and we've got to do it fast. Ten degrees below zero is a lethal weapon that we can't afford to fool with. Oh, there you are, Calvin. Whatever happened to that attractive man? Uh, John, I believe you said his name was. Oh, he's so attractive. How should I know what happened to him? Oh, no, really, Calvin. You're being most rude. Uh, the car's gone, you know. What? Whose car's gone? The sheriff's car, of course. Oh, really, Calvin? Don't pretend you don't know. Pretend I don't know? Why should I pretend I don't know? Besides, I... Well, they've gone. Quit. I knew those country bumpkins wouldn't figure anything out. Oh, really, Don? You don't have to make such an effort to impress us. We're quite aware of the fact that you murdered Bruce. What? What the devil are you talking about, Peggy? Oh, don't pay any attention to her, Don. She's crazy. Oh, Calvin, must you be so rude? Really, after Peggy, all... Peggy, if you don't stop telling me to stop being rude, I... I'll suck you one. Calvin! You see? That proves my theory, doesn't it? That proves that Bruce committed suicide. I don't care what that thick-headed sheriff says. I tell you, there's just so much of this sort of thing a man can stand. I'm a doctor, I know. Oh, really, Don? Stop saying really. See? That's what happened to Bruce. We've been here too long, shut in by the storm. Bruce couldn't take it. He got sick of looking at us and hearing our voices. I don't blame him. I'm sick of it, too. Oh, you are. Well, don't think we're not just as sick of you. You and your big talk. See? We're all sick of each other. See? Oh, really, Don? If you say see again, I, I think I'll scream. And if you say really again, Peggy, I'm going to do more than scream. Well, it would be interesting, Calvin, to see just what you would do. You've always been such a mousy little man. Why, you I little can't... hussy, old cow. Oh, quit it, quit it. it. This is what happened before. We don't want it to repeat itself. You stay out of this, Don. 
I'm going to teach her a lot. All right, Smith. Leave her alone. Great. How did you... How did we get out of the woodshed? Is that what you were going to ask, Smith? Woodshed? Yes. Yeah. What about the woodshed? Never mind the woodshed right now. Didn't I just hear you call Drake Drake? It slipped out. How stupid of you, Calvin. Really? You knew, too, didn't you, Miss Smith? Oh, darling, of course I did. I so. Oh, I've admired your pictures in the papers so many times. You're so attractive. You so know. you were all kidding us, eh? Well, for my dough, that means just one thing. You were trying to cover up something. Of course we were. Bruce was murdered. Do you think that... Oh, that... so he was murdered. I thought you said it was suicide, Doc. Naturally, I did. These people are my friends. I wanted to do everything I could to protect them. Which, of course, makes you an accomplice some way. Miss Smith, mm -hmm. how far down the road did you drive our car? Why, Barton, you don't think that I... Yes, we think that you. In fact, we know that you... Really? But I don't we see... We saw I... you, Miss Smith, through a crack in the log walls of the woodshed. And through the same crack, we saw your brother going back into the house after locking us in the shed. Locking you in? Yeah. Then... Oh, but how did you get out? Chopped our way out some way. Woodsheds usually have axes in them. This one had two. The exercise kept us from freezing and gave us our liberty. So now that that's all cleared up, we'll arrest the murderer and be on our way. Oh, Inspector, do you know who the murderer is, really? You should have. You all know who the murderer is, really. You've known from the moment it took place. Two of you have kept from telling us because you were afraid the same thing would happen to you that happened to Bruce Stearns. And you didn't have any real proof. Have you? Oh, yes, yes. We have proof, Calvin. Well, who is it? Get it over with. By the process of elimination, you must be it, Shumway. By the process of elimination, eh? Well, <laughs> I'm not quaking in my boots yet, Drake. Both Smith and his sister made attempts to keep us here because they wanted us to get the proof that neither of them could obtain. And darn near froze us to death in the attempt. Oh, you wouldn't have frozen to death. I, I only wanted to keep you locked up long enough to give Peggy the chance to drive your car away. So you two dirty... Really, Don? You were most naive to think that we weren't aware that you had murdered poor Bruce. <laughs> it was so easy to pretend that we believed your suicide theory. So that's it. You're all ganged up against me. Well, get this. You can't prove a thing. My testimony is better than any you can turn up. I'm a doctor. I can prove that Bruce shot himself. And we can prove that Bruce Stearns didn't die of bullet wounds some way. He was frozen to death. That's a lie. Is it? Now, let me tell you what I think happened. You and Stearns quarreled. In a fit of rage, you struck him. You're a much bigger man than Stearns was, Shumway. I think he ran away from you and you chased him down to the ice pond. One of you had a gun. You struggled for it and it went off twice, both bullets grazing Stearns' skull. That's exactly how it happened. It must have been. We... You didn't see anything, so shut up, Cal. No, Smith, I don't think you did see the fight. It was snowing too hard. Shumway knew this. He wiped his fingerprints from the gun and came up to the house and got you. Yeah. Naturally, I had to accept Shumway's statement that Stearns was dead, only he wasn't. And the argument that you leave the body in the sub-zero temperature of the woodshed to preserve it until the police arrived seemed logical to him. Only the police arrived sooner than you expected it. All right, Shumway, drop it. You fools. Didn't you think I'd be prepared for this the minute I knew you were Drake and Danton? This is one time... Oh, really, Don? You're being most difficult. Peggy! Look out, girl! Why, you... Don, you should have ducked. No, really. Gosh, Bart, did you see the way she tossed that vase? Really. Oh, really, Barton, you were magnificent. You really were, you know. Oh, thank you, Peggy. <laughs> And you're so attractive. Really, you are. Oh, I'm very flattered. Oh, slight. Oh, really, Inspector Danton? Must you be so crude? Are you oh, envious, really? Inspector? No, I'm not envious, but now I can see why everyone went nuts around here. Really, I can My gosh, now I'm saying it. <laughs> well, never mind, Inspector. You won't have to put up with it much longer. Before you leave, however, Drake, hmm? I'd like to know one thing. What's that, Mr. Smith? Well, how in Tunket did you know that Bruce wasn't killed by those shots? Well, the answer to that's quite simple. When the inspector and I shoveled away the snow, we found a depression in the ice where Stern's body had lain. You had previously told us that the thermometer had not risen above zero since before the storm started. That meant, of course, that the depression in the ice could only have been made by the heat from Stern's body, which meant he must have been alive. Why, George, that's right, isn't it? Oh, really, Barton? You're too, too wonderful. You, uh, you really are, you know. Yeah. 
Well, look, by tell her why you're too, too wonderful, and let's get out of here. Well, I can only guess at what you mean, Inspector. I suppose you mean that you want me to say because mystery is my hobby, and it really is, you know. Welcome back. Well, I don't know if people could, you know, today's listeners at all could relate to being trapped, you know, and having to stay inside with someone for an extended length of time till you notice uh, all of their annoying uh, habits and particularly some of the annoying things they say over and over again. I'm certain that nobody can relate to that in the audience today. But in all seriousness, all of the character ticks, I kind of felt like I was back in Boston Blackie, though I think they handled it uh, uh, better here. For one thing, they did kill off the most, the guy with the most annoying uh, uh, habit, uh, that laugh, and I did actually enjoy the story and how it really went in a direction I wasn't uh, expecting with why they had been locked up uh, out uh, behind the house. Uh, The ending of uh, Mystery is My Hobby felt a bit more natural here than in some past episodes. It was clear that uh, the Mystery is My Hobby phrase was appended onto the episode later on and somewhat clumsily. So these might have been episodes that were originally recorded with Murder is My Hobby, and then Langan came in and re-recorded them as uh, Mystery is My Hobby. Here, it's clear that Mystery is My Hobby was the original title on this episode. Now, even though he does mention this being Case 67, that's not necessarily indicative of anything. Uh, in terms of the numbering of the episodes, uh, just because the transcription disc uh, would often repeat an episode's place um, in a series. For example, uh, when I was going through the Radio Gold Index, there was an episode that was uh, where the disc was li- listed as disc 10 slash like 60 or 73 or something. So... Story number at the start of the episode doesn't necessarily mean a lot at this point. All right, well, some listener comments and feedback. And we start out with a comment from M over on the website. Uh, writing regarding episode number 3108, Snowbound. I'm catching up on episodes and just listening to the comments on this episode today. I just started laughing out loud when you read the comment from someone complaining about you poking holes in everything. First of all, many uh, old-time radio shows have more holes than half a dozen slices of Swiss cheese, and to say that the host is being negative is such a weird statement that I don't even understand where they're coming from. You don't have to be naive to enjoy these old Uh, radio shows, so discussing the story or performances in no way takes away from the enjoyment. The rambling, personal point of view, engaging commentary at the end of each episode is the reason to listen to this podcast as opposed to just finding these old-time radio episodes elsewhere. I really appreciate Adam's effort to create a community atmosphere here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Em, and uh, appreciate the comment. Uh, And speaking of holes, uh, Eric had some comments regarding episode... 3120. Uh, not just the similar looking brothers, there's also being able to untie and retie a glove, and this is referring to a boxing glove, in the short time between rounds. Then there's getting uh, scopolim to act exactly as needed. The coincidence of two brothers, one uh, lefty named Lefty and one righty, Uh, The good luck of uh, spotting one of them outside the office, it goes on. I'm generally fine with uh, script shortcuts, but this one, I'm guessing, took uh, 15 minutes to write the episode. Well, some fair points there, Eric. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for uh, emailing in. Uh, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Steve. Steve's been one of our Patreon supporters since January, currently supporting us at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Steve. 
And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then next Thursday, another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.